Hello, hi, everybody, and welcome to Aquarian Radio. And I'm your host, Janet Carolesson, and I may be joined by Teresa J. Moore. She's finishing up another show and may get a mad painter, Thomas Becker, coming over here as well. But for now, it's just me and Kevin Briggs. And Kevin Briggs is an author and specializes in consciousness and a connection to ETs and UFOs. His recently published book is titled Spiritual Consciousness, A Personal Journey and covers 56 years of his experiences of ET contact and UFO connections. Kevin speaks to many groups of UFO and ET enthusiasts. Uh, They are always eager to hear of his interactions, and he receives a warm reception. He's written articles which have been published in the Truth magazine, and his published book is also mentioned in Psychic News in the U.K., uh, in their editor's good read section. He's also written an article about his ET experiences, which has been published in the new Observation magazine, and he's appeared on local radio stations and recently filmed for a TV show called Unlocking Your Limitless Life, which was hosted by Susan Schatzer and produced by Robin C. Adams. And Kevin was also a keynote, keynote speaker last September at the Miami Free Consciousness and Contact Experiencer Conference, which was hosted by the Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences, also known as Free. And so I want to welcome Kevin to our show. Thank you so much. Oops, let me put you on mute too. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us. Um, welcome to our show. Well, thank you, Janet. That was a great introduction. Uh, uh, it was quite lengthy, but uh, I, I tend to forget now. I've been doing this for a couple of years since I was asked to speak by my ET guides, and there seems to be a lot of interest in it. So uh, uh, the more I speak, the more uh, there's to talk about, really, I suppose. So, so thank you again for the uh, uh, welcome and the invite to your show. I do enjoy about talking about my experiences now, and that's what I was asked to do by my ET guide. So I'm just uh, really com- conveying the message from what they're telling me. We're going to get into it in depth, that I am a lifelong experience or ET contactee, and I, too, have the same dictate to get out there and tell the world about the extraterrestrials. They're here. They've been here all along. Um, I think that um, they're ready for us to join them in their federation and councils and, and go and become a space-faring, sparing, space-faring, not fearing, <laughs> We're going to get yes, out there I think, in I, <laughs> I think that's quite correct, Janet. I'm meeting a lot of experiences now since I've been talking about, and we all seem to have the, the same message or a small piece within the, the large jigsaw, but we're all talking uh, the same story, really, and it's quite interesting when you meet uh, other experiences. They'll share some of their uh, experiences and I've had one lady that actually had contact with my two first ET guides, and uh, it was amazing to meet someone who speaks to the same exact ETs. It's just great confirmation. Well, I'd like for you to start at the beginning. How did you get your first contact? Now, you're originally from the U.K., so did it, you know, where did it start? Did it start over there? Did it continue when you moved to, I guess you yeah, said you're in Florida? Yeah, so start at the beginning, and I'm going to listen to you for about 15 minutes or so, and then I might uh, interrupt you and ask some questions here and there. So go okay. ahead and start. Okay. That's fine. Um, I would say my, my journey did start in England. Uh, it began really when I was about uh, three, well, about three years old. Uh, my mother decided to uh, have some photographs taken by a professional photographer, and we were duly washed and hairbrushed and uh, uh, spruced up a little bit and the uh, photographer arrived to take the photographs and as a three-year-old I was to go first I was lifted up onto the uh, uh, oak table which was an old drop leaf oak table uh, and I was perched up there by the photographer to get a a better view and uh, at that time I looked around the room and I realized that uh, I was conscious and I was conscious again in a, a physical body. And that was a clear recollection as I went around the room, as I say, not just from the elevated position, but an elevated position of knowing about consciousness 
and the fact that cows uh, had to be so that was quite interesting. And uh, the um, I remember when the uh, I told my wife that story when I read it, and she. So yeah, I want you to elaborate on that. So you're conscious, and I, and I had because I had a similar experience. But before I tell you about mine, I want you to tell me. So what do you mean by you were you were just aware? Of okay, I was aware that there that? was two. Yeah. I was aware there was two parts to me. There was the uh, conscious part, and the physical part. And the conscious was inside the physical, and I was aware of that at three years of age. And as I was saying, when I relayed that story to my wife, she said, uh, a three-year-old don't use words like consciousness, and a three-year-old don't have an understanding of that. Uh, that the start of my journey. Wow. And so so she was aware that that wasn't normal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. It was quite normal to me, all my experiences appeared normal to me until I got older and I started questioning them that other people didn't have these experiences. But I've now learned otherwise that there are many of us now uh, that are out here. Um, my second um, interaction with the, when I was about, well, I was, I was eight years old, I remember it uh, specifically. Uh, at that time, we used to have a weekly bath. I don't know how, how hygienic that was, but uh, uh, that was the routine. And uh, uh-huh. I'd run the bath, I'd got into the bath, and uh, at that moment in time, I felt a change in the vibrational frequency within the bathroom. I looked to my right, and two beings appeared, um, both very attractive, one male, one female, long blonde hair, shoulder length, wearing tight blue fitting, uh, like a jumpsuit. And uh, mm-hmm. they were they were talking to one another telepathically, uh, which I could understand. And they were talking about me and not to me. And now, I know these guys now, their names are Art and Dee, and I've interacted with them all my life. But this was the first occasion. And I was, as you can imagine, as an eight-year-old boy, I was frightened to death by it. But I remember a little bit of the no. conversation, and it went as follows. The female, whose name is Dee, uh, said to Art, that's the male, are you sure this is the boy? And the Art said, yes, I'm sure this is the boy. And then she said, are you really sure? Because uh, uh, look at him, he's very small, he's uneducated, and he's frightened by our presence. He says, yes, I am sure. I will guide him, I will teach him. There was then some other interaction between the two of them. I don't remember the full conversation, and shortly afterwards they left. I was so frightened by the experience, I was unable to get out of the bath. I sat there, the water went cold, I was shivering. My wife, I'm sorry, my uh, mother came in to see uh, uh, why I was still in the bathtub, and I explained about the two beings, and she said it was just my imagination. Julie came out of the bath, washed and dried, and went on with my evening. Uh, but it wasn't part of my imagination. I knew it was real. And it's continued on to this day, and I'm now 65. I'm 65 Um, too. When's your birthday? uh, 2nd of February, 1954. I'm the 6th of February, 1954. Small world. Very close, isn't it? It is a small world. Yes. Maybe some some coincidence there. Yes. Anyway, my third, who will want to like. Sorry, go on. I was just going to ask you, was anybody else in the bathroom? But your mother came in later. She wasn't there at the time yeah. of the manifestation. No, okay, no, so I was on, the, on my own, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then my third interaction with them, I was nine years old. And um, uh, on that, I still in, in the UK, on, on that occasion, I was at home playing with some friends. And um, the friends were leaving. I showed them out to the house. And when I came back into the house, I realized that there was, uh, uh, again, a change in vibrational frequency within the house. Uh, so I was aware that there was somebody, someone else in the home. So I went upstairs, you know, to see who they were. Couldn't see anybody. Went into the kitchen, went back into the living room where the uh, vibrational frequency was the strongest. And uh, for some reason, I looked 
then behind the uh, uh, curtains or drapes, as we say over here in the U.S., and there was a, mm-hmm. uh, a small orb. It was about four to six inches across. It was slightly vibrating. It was orangey, yellow in color, and uh, it, it actually stayed for a whole week. Uh, the following morning, uh, I got up to go to school, and I was hoping that it would have disappeared uh, because I thought my mother would be angry at me for... I thought I was responsible for bringing the orb into the home. So uh, the following day when I got up to school, it was still there. I went to school, came back from school at about 4 o'clock, and when I opened the back door to the house, I knew the orb was still there. I could feel the vibrational frequency. I didn't have any direct communication with the orb, but it stayed for five days, directly behind the curtain. No one ever saw it, and it didn't make any direct communication with me that I'm aware of. However, on was the it Friday, transparent or solid? Say this again. Was it transparent, translucent, solid? What was it? Well, it, it like? wasn't translucent. You couldn't see through it. Um, I know what it is now. It's, it was a pure conscious energy orb, and it was the conscious energy of Art himself. I found out that later. Um, but I know when I came home on the Friday, the last day of the week there from school, I opened the door uh, to the house at the back and the um, I could tell straight away that the um, sea within the house uh, had left. Uh, it was no longer there. I went to have a look behind the curtain and uh, it, the orb disappeared. So uh, I, was, I was quite happy. But what I did notice <laughs> almost immediately was the fact that my sight is had been enhanced tremendously to a point where I was able to travel outside of my body to separate my consciousness itself from the physical. Uh, now, at this time, uh, I wasn't aware that other people weren't able to do this. And I just used to use it uh, for simple things, such as I would go and visit my grandparents who lived in Liverpool at the time. And I would usually probably fly over the weekend uh, and just see how they were doing. I would leave my body. Uh, think about where I wanted to go, go over to my home. I would usually sit upstairs. They had a master bedroom upstairs, which had a large dressing room off. And there was a chair in there, and I used to sit down on that chair, look down through the floor that was opaque, and I would see my grandmother in the kitchen on a Sunday, usually cooking. My grandfather would be either reading the newspaper or watching the TV in the family room there. And I would do this on a regular basis as a child, not thinking it was unusual, thinking everybody had these abilities. But clearly, the thought was in the home for uh, uh, just short of a week. Clearly, it changed something that uh, allowed me to um, So, uh, I think I'm still thinking that everybody has it, and uh, it's quite normal. I it's like you know, hearing, smell, taste, touch, all the senses that we have, and out of body. I understand now that that's not the case, but I have met some people who are able to travel outside the body. Uh, so, uh, so that would be a third encounter. I'm now nine years old. Still thinking nothing unusual. And then if we go on, move on further to my fourth encounter. I would be 14 years old. I'm still living in the same home. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, I had a paper round at that time for extra pocket money. And uh, most days when I left the house, I would always see you for It would always just be there when I left the house. And then I started to walk towards the store, which was about to find the store to collect the papers. Uh, a second UFO would always appear from a different direction. And then the two UFOs would follow me around, uh, the paper round, until I finished. And then uh, one of the UFOs, and they go back the way they come, and the other one would go straight up into space. But this one day after day. Wait, what did they look uh, like? Uh, well, I'll, I'll get on to that in a second. The, uh, okay. Uh, what happened was I thought I became a little paranoid. I thought they were following me. And um, they were following me, I'm sure now. And uh, 
And I always had the feeling when I was doing the paper round that there were some beings with me. And they were either just the other side of the hedge, uh, the other side of a wall that I was delivering the paper. And I knew they were there for quite a long time. And then on one occasion, I plucked up the courage to ask them to show themselves. I said, I know you are there. Uh, I know you're probably me. And uh, can you show yourself? So uh, two small beings came out from behind the hedge, and there were, there were two small greys. Uh, about the same size as me. I wasn't very tall at 14. Um, I wasn't uh, frightened by, by it. Um, I just accepted them as small beings. And uh, they told me that uh, there was a group of people that wanted to meet with me. Would I be prepared to go with them? And uh, I said at that time, um, well, I've got to finish my paper round. I've just got a few more papers to deliver. And I can't be very long because I've got to go to school. And uh, it's important that I go to school. But I don't mind going for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Uh, so so they agreed. They said, it won't keep long. Uh, we'll wait till you finish the paper round. And then uh, we'll go and meet these people. So I said, uh, well, ha- have you got some transport? Yes, we have some transport over here in the, uh, there's some local woods there, and there's some transport there. So I finished duly the paper round, and then went with these two beings into a small craft, and uh, uh, we went up into a mothership. Uh, from there, I met a group of uh, eight PT. Uh, I've got to know this group quite well over the years, and uh, I know their names, a little bit about their occupation, some of them, and uh, a little bit about their characters and things. So, um, Quite a leap, really, from in that short period from eight <laughs> to fourteen to actually meeting a, a group let's, of. Let me, uh, let me uh, unpack that a little bit. So, okay. you're you're going on your paper route, and they asked you to go with them, and uh-huh. you said, that, "Yeah, I can go, but you what have like fifteen, twenty minutes or something, <laughs> make yeah. it short." But you go on, and and they, you called them a mothership. How did you know? To call it a mothership. What do you mean by mothership? Oh, because, because it was absolutely huge. Where we went up huge. into a huge hangar, and there was very many different, what we term as UFOs, within this huge hangar. And uh, there were people working on the craft, and uh, there was a small ET there who waved to me, who I, I actually got to know later on. And uh, he's a pilot and a technician, and he's a small grey. But uh, um, it was the size of it uh, that I realized it was an actual size. mothership. Yeah. Right, because these could hold other ships in it, yes. Okay, so then you, I have on the website that you've interacted with um, a number of different species. Uh, some were the, like a blue avian, which is the bird. You've got the... I, what you were describing, the ones that oh. were the suits with the blonde hair, oh, it's usually Pleiadians. Yeah, they are yeah, go ahead. on my memory now. If we start with the first two, Ort and D, they're actually Arcturians. They look just Arcturian. like me and you. Yeah, they were the two that uh, materialized in my bathroom uh, when I was eight. And these are the two that the, a lady I met recently, that she's interacted with as well. And she had information about them that you would only have if you would actually had a, a meeting with them and, and met them, you know. And then the third part of this group of eight, uh, she's a blue avian. Her name is Anna, and she's a she's a, a healer, uh, an empath. But I tend to think they're all like that. And then there's a small girl uh-huh. who was part of this large group. Uh, his name is Darth, a small girl. He's a mathematician. He's an engineer and he designs propulsion systems. And then there's the leader of this group, his name is Ra, he's a Anunnaki, and he leads this group, this what he calls the Council of Eight. And then there's Council. another tall guy, his name is Tad, and he's responsible for security, not only for the Council of Eight, but in this quadrant of the galaxy. And then there's uh, Chica, he's a mantis, and uh, uh-huh. when I first met him, I was kind of quite not fearful when I saw him. Uh, the others didn't bother me too much. Uh, and at that point, when I was on the craft, the uh, Anna, the Blue Raven, she came up and gave me support and put her arm around me because uh, she could feel the, 
uh, uncertainty that I was feeling, the apprehension. And then finally is Orla. She's a tall white, and I believe she's a astrobiologist, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but this group, I realise now, I didn't at the time, I realise now who they are. And when I thought, when I went into this big meeting room, it was like a, an amphitheatre. And I came in at the top of the back, walked down, and it was full of people, this amphitheatre. And on the stage were these eight beings. So I was duly walked in front of them and introduced to each of them individually. And I thought they were just there to see the young human, you know, like a zoo or something. But what I realized later mm-hmm. was this was their council of eight who rule this um, uh, quadrant of the uh, uh, our galaxy, as it were. And what was really happening there, that was one of their large meetings. The group that was there were their delegates uh, for, the, for the surrounding uh-huh. areas and things. So it was a little bit like our uh, United so Nations. Me, where you have a... Like United Nations. Let me, let me, let me um, slow this down because this is very important. We had the report from A.R. Borden that there were these ongoing meetings with the different species. Now, Ra is, um, is the name of Marduk, Marduk Ra. And Marduk Ra is the eldest son of Enki. And so he was indeed uh, given rulership of the earth after Sodom and Gomorrah. And most of the um, Anunnaki left. So I have some correlating information. That's why I want to slow this down. This is very important. And after the Anunnaki left, a lot of them left, but they returned in 1221-2012. But anyway, um, as far as we know, he still has dominion over the earth. It was his turn to rule. Now, they're extremely long-lived. Uh, he's right. probably yeah, hundreds of thousands of years old. And so, yeah. and then, you know, I have seen all these species. The only difference is um, my bird people weren't blue. They were more like okay natural bird colors. I didn't see the okay. blue avian that I'm aware of, that I'm aware of, but I've had, you know, contact with all the other species, and they may have been in the group. I don't. I just don't recall having, like, a face-to-face one-on-one conversation with a blue avian, but I have seen, um, you know, uh, I was going up a, a pyramid of uh, for a going away ceremony when I was coming to the earth. This is like in a past life thing. And I was right, uh, okay. relocating to the earth to, to help assist um, us in this time of transformation. And as I climbed the pyramid, and this was over on Nibiru, the, it was lined with the bird people. And they're very tall and they're slender and they seem to be like the guards, the guardian race. But the blue oh, okay. avians are a high, a high spiritual species that are here to protect uh, humanity. So you're in this very important meeting, and you're there because you're very important, because the very (laughs) first thing they said, are you sure this is the right boy, right? It's kind of like when they were looking for Luke Skywalker. Is this the right boy, right? (laughs) So I don't want to just glance past this because this is a very important meeting. So this was a, um, so what else? Let's slow this down. So you're at this meeting. You're seeing all these species. Do you recall any conversations? There wasn't a great deal of conversation, no. It was just an introduction to each one. They wanted to introduce themselves to me, uh, which they all did, and I was quite comfortable with that. Uh, I say, except for when I saw Chica, who was a mantis, and then, as I just said, the blue avian came and supported me by standing up and walking around next to me and putting her arm around me and comforting me because she felt my, uh, uh, the fact that I was apprehensive. Um, so, no, we didn't have any great conversation. Uh, I don't recall any at all other than the introduction. And then after the introduction, uh, I was uh, led back to the small craft again and I was taken back home. And I got home at about... Uh, um, 
10, 15 minutes past eight in the morning. So I'd only been gone about the 20 minutes that they'd asked them to do, and that was just enough time, I suppose, to fly up there, be introduced to them, and then uh, come back down and get on with my day. So, um, But I, I've interacted with this group of eight now for uh, quite a number of years. I've got to know them quite well. I'm able to communicate with them um, at will, just using consciousness itself now. So uh, it's um, quite a development, really, from that very um, frightened boy in the bathroom at eight years of age. So let's let's focus on that because this is the disclosure. This is the important information, and I'm aware of these councils, and I go to the council meetings, and I have interactions with all these species. So this oh, okay. is um, really important for me personal. Except, like I said, the blue avian. But maybe they'll show up tonight. Hey, I, I'd like to meet you. I I like everybody. <laughs> I like all <laughs> species. Um, but um, so what? So obviously you're meeting with them for a purpose. And what yeah, I think I, I, I realize that now. As a child, obviously I was extremely naive, and um, uh, but yeah, I, I do understand that now. Yeah. And and what's going on? What's the what? Sorry. What's going on on this planet? They they have these council meetings. It appears that they they love humanity, and yet we're being subjected to a lot of stuff. Are, are they giving you any insights? For, I'll give you an example. For me, I'm uh, I go to other planets, and I'm looking at the political systems because humanity's political systems are atrocious. Um, right. A conscious civilization does not allow its people to starve, to live out in the streets in the elements, you know, don't even have sanitation, don't have a place to bathe. Um, that is like a sin against every human to allow one human to live in such hideous conditions. And they just look at us like, what are you doing? This is so primitive. We know better than that. Um, so they've been taking me and showing me different social systems and um, governance systems and ways of um, meeting the needs of everybody. And uh, so somehow I'm working to interpret that. I have absolutely no control on this human level. I'm just a little girl, a little old lady. Yeah, but go ahead. They have given me very similar information in relation to, they do describe us as a a prison planet, and uh, uh, we're not, um, uh, we're kept as slaves, as it were, and uh, they don't like the political systems. They don't like uh, what you've been saying, the way we're all treated in relation to there's enough um, uh, food and things to go around so people are not starving. And the fact that we kill one another with impunity with our wars and things. And they're also concerned about the Earth itself in relation to the way we treat the Earth, in relation to the, the fact we're actually destroying it and killing it. And they, they want to change that. And uh, I have a specific mission which we finish off with that if, uh, if we can do that. And if I just continue on with a little for the next installation to when I was about 16, 17, 18, they gave me more information about consciousness itself. Would you like to hear about that? Or, um, that would be oh, yeah, chronological. Oh, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to know what they're teaching you. And I and what I see, I get that that's our next level. You know, for years people were showing up. I've been abducted by aliens and yada 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 blah blah blah. Yeah. So we did that. We did that. It was like that. We're we've grown up and we're past it. So now, right. um, what's going on? Okay. From well, your perspective, uh, let, let me make it clear. Level. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, let me make it clear. I've never been abducted. And what they have taught me over these 56, 57 years is about consciousness itself and how important consciousness is to us as a species. And we have to be able to understand that to be able to move forward and regain our rightful position back in the galactic uh, society which we belong, which we've been denied for so many years uh, by the people that rule our planet. Uh, And that's really what they're wanting to do. But to do that, they've given me an education, not about the different species, not about the political systems. They give me an education about consciousness itself. Uh, they emphasize that that's more important for us to learn about consciousness in respect of how it reflects on all living life within the universe. 
And once we right. understand that, then they're ready to move forward to the next stage of our evolution and development and being brought back into the uh, um, galactic consciousness or universal consciousness, whichever way you want to talk about it. So in to that child, when I was 16, 17, 18, uh, I realized that people weren't traveling outside of the body like I do. People weren't having interactions with higher conscious beings. I thought they were spiritual beings at the time. So on the evening, I think I was about 16, I can't remember. I know where I was living at the time. I've moved location and I was living in a, a city called Leeds in the UK. So one evening I went to bed and I you relaxed, I opened my mind and I asked Ark to come. I said, I know there's much more to this. I can't find any more information. Can you come and teach me? Can you come and guide me? I need more information. So at that point, he appeared in the uh, uh, my bedroom, and uh, he took hold of my hand, which I had held out, and I left my body, nothing unusual for me. I looked down. I can see my body. It was now asleep, and uh, we left out through the uh, window, and uh, we just went on a short journey, just around the subdivision over the house tops, and then came back into the window. I could see my body asleep. I went back into my body, and then the following morning I woke up. I thought, well, that was cool. I'm not sure whether I was imagining it or if it was a dream. So I thought the second night I would do the same thing again. So the second night I go to bed, I relax, I open my mind, I ask Art to come and show me some more things. He appears, he grabs hold of my hand, I'll leave my body, I look down, I'm asleep. We leave again through the window, and uh, we go a little bit further this time. We go down onto the uh, town centre. I see the university building, the town hall building, the hospital buildings I recognise. And then we fly back again into the window. I see my body asleep, and um, I go back down and go into my body. So I wake up the following morning, and I'm thinking, I'm still not certain whether I'm sleepwalking, dreaming or what. So I thought, I'll try it again for the third evening. So the third evening, again, I relax, I open my mind, I ask God to appear and show me some more things. But on, on the first two occasions, I was a bit uh, apprehensive about going out through the window because we were three stories up on, and at the bottom was a mm-hmm. concrete pavement. So in case I was uh, um, sleepwalking or something, I was a bit uh, uh, perturbed about that. So I asked God, Instead of going out through the window, can we go out through the uh, uh, through the roof? And they said, yeah, no problem. So again, it took hold of my hand. We went out through the roof. We flew some distance and then came back in, uh, back to the roof into my body. And then all subsequent journeys, we left through the roof. And then on one occasion, he came to me and he said, Kevin, I'm going to take somewhere special this evening. Are you happy to go? I said, I'm happy to go anywhere you want to take me. So... Uh, and we set off, went out through the roof as usual, and we went up and up and up and up. And I could see the blue earth disappearing slowly. Uh, it got right down to a small ball and disappeared altogether. And then we took what I, I, I describe as a right turn, but I, I believe we went into a higher dimension. And in mm-hmm. that dimension there, there was a line of 30 people. And at the head of the line was my father, who was deceased, he was stood at the front of the line, and he welcomed me. And he was, uh, I'd never seen him standing. He was six feet tall. I'd always known him when he was in a wheelchair. And uh, mm. he greeted me. He said, Kevin, I'm going to introduce you to all your family members. And there were 30 people lined up. And, he, and we went down wow. the first 15, and there was a line of these people. They all introduced me. The feeling of love was tremendous. But then the second 15 were just the pure, conscious energy of slightly vibrating uh, orangey yellow in color and uh, but I could still speak to them uh, telepathically and they showed me images of themselves when they had a physical and I went right down the line and uh, and then it was time to leave I would leave and then I would visit them on a regular basis with art and I became so confident in doing that that I used to go and visit them on on my own uh, but I was finding it more and more difficult to get back into my physical. So I decided one day at work that I wouldn't go and visit them anymore, but I would have to go back and tell them. So that evening, I uh, relaxed off in my mind. I went to the higher dimensional levels, and I spoke with them. I told them I wouldn't be coming back 
they were most disappointed. They tried to persuade me to stay. And I said, no, I had things to do in the physical. But I know you're here. I will come and meet you when my physical expires. And uh, I, I left them, and uh, uh, I've never been back since. And that was about 16, 17 then. But I know that they're there. I know that when my physical expires, they will welcome me with open arms. Uh, because I'm sure you're aware, we are ourselves higher conscious beings living in a, in a physical. Um, so that was one of the things that they taught me. They haven't. They don't sat me down in a classroom and taught me things. They helped me experience things, and that's expanded my knowledge of consciousness itself. Does that make sense to you? Well, it makes total sense because um, now nobody came and got me, but I would travel nightly out of my body, and okay. I tended to go lead two ways. I would um, come out of my bed and walk down the stairs. Sometimes I would go walking out the front door, but I didn't open the door. I just went, boom, you know, right to the door, and then I'd fly, um, you know, all over the place. And then uh, other times I would go, (laughs) it was so funny, I would go to the edge of the couch and stand on the edge of the couch and just shoot myself through the window, the front window. Uh So I don't know why I exited that way. And the third way I would go, was down, and I would walk through, I mean, I was walking through everything. I walked through the, the door, it went down to the basement. I didn't never open the door, I just walked through, and I would go yeah. down to the, and I would go down to an um, uh, underworld, to the cities underneath, so I would do the travel. Uh, but I had trouble on my own getting past, like, treetop height, and it was only when I went with the uh, systems that I got to the level like you were going but it sounds like you were over in the land of the dead because you were meeting deceased relatives, and uh, and then the orbs might have been relatives that were more ancient, or were, were they related, or just high-level beings? Yeah, they were, just, they were they were older older people, uh, older uh-huh. um, conscious energies, conscious energy orbs. They were going back over a three hundred year period. I was told. Um, so you wow. know, it, that gave me an understanding that you know the our consciousness continues uh, to live, thrive at these higher levels of consciousness. Uh, so it takes away any fear of death you have uh, by being able to interact with these people. And, uh, right. and of, I remember saying that some of my psychic abilities were enhanced as a child. Uh, because of that, I was, I'm able to communicate with deceased fam- individual deceased family members and friends but when they pass over to the higher levels of consciousness. So, uh, although I don't have to use that for other people's purposes, I do have the ability to do that. But, uh, uh, but if you well, want I, to I too, I can talk to the dead. We, so you're saying you can talk to the dead? Yeah, I don't call them dead. I, I don't like using that term because uh, <laughs> to me they're not dead. That what they've done, they've raised their back. The people who leave they've, their forms, for people who leave their yeah, avatars, they've, they've you can talk to their them. vibrational frequency, so they exist at a higher vibrational frequency. Mm-hmm. Still alive. Do they come to you the, when they pass? Do they come to you? Uh, yes, most, do, most do yes. Well, family and friends do, yes. At least once, you know, to let me know that they're okay. And uh, occasionally, sometimes I pass messages, but I don't tend to do that. Uh, Oh, I just noticed that my um, co-host joined us. I want to want to introduce you to each other and see if she has any questions on consciousness. I'm going to take her off of mute. Is this you, Teresa? It is. is Hi, Janet. Hi, Teresa Hi, Kevin. J. Morris. And uh, I want you to meet <laughs> Kevin Briggs. So, uh, Teresa Hi, Kevin. Is my co-host. Hi, Teresa. And she was... She was busy on another show, and they, she wrapped okay. that up, and she came to join us. So Kevin is a a high level conscious contactee who has interacted with many species, especially the beings in the council. I don't know how much you heard. There's a special council, but he said that they want us to learn about consciousness. So I wondered uh, because consciousness is such a like an abstract term. So if we can get more concrete on what they mean by what they want us to learn about consciousness. So for you, learning about consciousness was going out of your body. 
So, TJ, do you have any questions or comments to Kevin about consciousness and what that means to you? Well, <clears throat> being that I've been out of body many times and near death and travel and go see ETs and things, sounds like we're just kindred spirits at a certain level of yeah. knowing about oneself and what consciousness, I would just suspect there's the 3D reality of what it is. And then those of us that have always done readings, we use the A field. So we go, we know there's another existence consciousness. And then the theory of everything or the Akashic field is where we study libraries of everything. We try to think is a conscious thought. So uh, I don't know because each of us have our own ways of expressing when we're in and outside of the inner innerverse and the outerverse and everything in between the microcosm to the macrocosm. So we do need to establish what we all think. You know, there's millions of YouTubes of various academics trying to tell us what it is. But, you know, when you get down the bottom line listening to these people, they don't know what it is and they don't know how to find the soul. So. We, no. We're still debating what consciousness is, so nobody really knows what it really is. <laughs> well, well they explained it. Yeah, you know, they explained it to me that uh, the life form in the universe is consciousness itself, and um, everything is conscious. Even you know the trees, the plants, the animals, cells have consciousness, and uh, if we understand that. Uh, that obviously encompasses all the other life forms, the other ETs, uh, the different levels of consciousness in relation to our deceased families and friends. They are still conscious, they are still alive, just at a higher level of consciousness. And once we understand that, perhaps we'll, every time, perhaps we'll start respecting one another, respecting the planet itself because it is conscious. Uh, and then we'll uh, stop doing harm to one another because then you, are, you harm another being harming consciousness itself. Uh, and they're wanting us to learn the higher consciousness to incorporate themselves. Their main message is given me is about this consciousness rather than the ET cells. But the ETs are here to help us uh, to raise our vibrational frequency uh, so um, we can develop as a species. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it's hard to understand. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll you. Go ahead, TJ. Okay, I was going to talk about. I was just going to mention, you know, what we we say we the word consciousness. However, those of us studying metaphysics are that which is of everything. I guess cosmology as well is the fact that we really don't understand even all the languages of what each other is in the different containers. So where we're at in the quantum physics and is that and how to explain. What God is, our energy, you know, you hear people say force, energy, essence, God, all those same words, but yet it's something that is everything to some people, but how do we separate? Because we travel and we talk about, the, you know, beta, alpha, theta, delta, gamma levels of existence in this reality, in our own species, in our own container, However, most of us know that are awake and aware now in the Ascension Age after 12, 21, 12, is the fact that many of us have always known that we're millions, not billions of years old, and that we've all traveled through all universes, not just this one universe in this one supercluster, in this one galaxy, on this one planet, in this one sentient being container. So. Now what's happening is we're all trying to find out how we're going to talk to each other because most of us can't even consciously understand what conscious is in our language, much less in Hebrew, Greek, Latin, or another language we can't speak, even French. Or, so globally, we're just using the vibrations we call radio waves and the Internet now to try to just at least – communicate so yeah. but the fact that we're talking on this radio show and that kevin has the ability to separate his various levels so kevin my question to you is i've always been born with et experiences and not just this lifetime but many prior is the fact that how do we explain consciousness inside our individual versus the all it's like a drop of water but yet God is all water, and we're, what, 87% water? 
However, where is the consciousness? Because our well, mind yeah, and well, our brain is not our consciousness. No, they did explain to me that uh, some people use the word uh, source energy as consciousness, and they they did explain to me, and I'm no academic, uh, that consciousness itself, conscious energy, exists to a subatomic level. Uh, there are five subatomic levels, and the energy at those levels is where consciousness itself exists. So uh, our universe's consciousness exists in all things at that level. Now I don't understand that. I'm not a. Uh, I'm saying I'm not an academic, but that's what they've informed me at the time when they gave me that information. That our uh, scientists have not yet discovered the five subatomic particles, but they will, and it will help them understand consciousness, where it exists, and uh, the extent it affects the universe and all life in the universe. So, uh, but again, I must stress, I'm not an academic. Um, but did they, they did give, you any give me steps. Yes. Yes. Did they give you any way to become conscious? Any methods? Any system? But go ahead. Um, oh, nothing in relation to um, that. They, they, they have been giving me some downloads recently in relation to um, the quantum unified field theory and the theory of everything. But uh, um, it was fairly, I think it was, I asked them why they did that. And they said, so I would have a rudimentary understanding of consciousness itself, as I've just explained where it exists. And how I'm able to use consciousness for travel, for communication, even for creation itself. So they give me a rudimentary understanding of the quantum unified field theory, which is almost correct, they tell me. Our scientists have uh, four interactions which they understand. I think it's weak, strong force, electromagnetic, and gravitational. But they say, however, there's a fifth force interaction, which is consciousness itself. And when our scientists fully understand the five interactions, uh, their own quantum unified field theory, they will have a better understanding of consciousness itself. Um, as I say, I'm not an academic. They've just given me this information. So I'm comfortable with being able to use my own consciousness, which I'm able to separate from the physical, use it for traveling, use it for communication, and use it for creation itself. So, uh, But we all have these abilities. I'm just fortunate that uh, I have had this group of ATTs who have educated this people, although I still think it's rude. Just so I can explain my own mind and then the word why I can do these things. Does that make sense? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. It, it, to explain okay, so to yourself what your consciousness is, because my consciousness is separate from yours. However, I do get to read as a psychic other people's, if, if I'm allowed to go up in the Akashic field, or sometimes if I'm in the in the, uh, the presence of a human, it's easier to read sometimes if you're within six feet, you know. Okay. So you, you wonder at the extraterrestrials because some of them I was around that were humans on this rea- on this planet in this reality they look like me, but they could use ESP with each other, but they could close it off when they'd sit with me in a restaurant. So I've got a lot of understanding about what it what makes us separate entities from our container and how why do some species use ET all the time and I have a I'm a precog or I can know what's gonna happen before it happens. Okay. And uh when I when I was on a motorcycle going around a I got this eerie feeling a few minutes before and had I been going on this Kentucky road that's real curvy and around this hill where I couldn't see anything, if I hadn't have paid attention to it when I got around this sharp curb was a wreck, even though it was a little country lane, it was, you know, okay. like two people had, I would have been killed probably. So I, I, I don't understand consciousness when it can be in, in and out of bodies in and, and you can be around other species that use it differently than we do. And then why is it sometimes we know things when we're, it's like having the third eye open all the time, but it only works in certain instances. It's not on all the time, but it allowed me to know. Now, that makes you wonder, was that me? Was that God? Was that an angel? Was it extraterrestrial? Was that a guide? 
But, you know, when you can see all the other things. That's a serious dichotomy because you are all of it. You are all the above. Um, Let me just reflect on this consciousness discussion. I watched an episode of Strange Angel, which is about Jack Parsons, uh, who created JPL Labs, labs, Jack Parsons Labs, and was the precursor for NASA. And he was involved with a an Aleister Crowley group, and his he he was he was troubled. He couldn't figure out how he was going to get his inventions past the bureaucracy. Sounds like what's going on now, right? But they wouldn't go beyond um, propellers, and he had rockets. Uh, he had information because he was seeing the future, right? He knew that we we're going to space. So his friend. Uh, took him out to the desert, and I guess he gave him either peyote or ayahuasca, some kind of brew. And so, you know, he was on a vision quest, and he saw himself uh, encountering his father, like you did. You missed that, TJ, yeah. but Kevin encountered his father, and his father took him to the moon. And he said, here it is, son, you made it. You're on the moon. We're on the moon now. And he was doing tests, and he was like, on the first test, they, they had uh, initials and then uh, one, two, three, and he, and he came back after his vision quest and he told his friend the next day, he goes, I got it, I got it, I know exactly how it's going to unfold and, and, and we, we're going to have colonies on the moon and it'll be, the, uh, the one that really works was number 56 or something like that. He, he realized he was way far in the future. Now, unfortunately, Jack didn't get to, to live long enough to see his future manifest, and we're still not on the moon at the level that Jack saw, but we did get to the moon. Now, he knew he was a conscious being. He knew he was more than his body. He was time traveling, and he was out of his body. So is that kind of what they're teaching you by taking you out of your body to see your father, your your passed-on relatives, and orbs? That's you, Kevin. I think think so, yes. I mean, uh, what it, it means to me is I use consciousness all the time for communicating with, um, uh, say, the particular council of eight. Uh, I'm able to, um, uh, I know uh, Teresa mentioned the third eye opening. Um, I'm not quite sure whether that's what happens with me. But if I relax, open my mind, and ask to speak with the council, uh, what I'll see, usually from one side, I'll see conscious energy move into my uh, space, as it were, uh, whether it's through the third eye or not, I'm not certain. But then all eight will appear in a, a, a uh, semicircle uh, as pure conscious energy. It's moving, it's vibrating, it's fluid. And then if one wants to speak or communicate with me, they will take front and center stage and speak with me using consciousness itself. Then when they're finished, they will move back into the group and the next person will move front and center and communicate. Now, now, that to me is just using consciousness itself. Whether it's using the third eye or not, I'm not certain because I'm not seeing a physical, I'm just seeing pure conscious energy. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm not even sure when we're there what form we're in, if we are even in form still or we're in like a spiritual body right, okay. rather than well, our physical suspect, form. Our form might be back there. Yeah, go ahead. What do you suspect? Yeah, I would suspect. Are you there? That, uh, yeah, I'm still here. I would suspect that um, I'm entering that higher level of consciousness, and that's how I'm able to communicate with them. And I know from another experience that I had, uh, perhaps I'm doing that. Uh, they, I was actually traveling on the astral plane, and we were in a small conscious craft traveling, and uh, I see them as two pure conscious energy orbs. And I said to them, how do you see me? And they said, as a pure conscious energy orb. So I explained that to them. I said, so let me get, see if I can understand this. We are traveling on a plane in a small conscious craft as three um, conscious energy orbs. And we've got uh, uh, myself as a human and the two of you who are Arturian. Uh, and they said, yes, that's correct. So we, we were able to meet up traveling on the plane in a they create using consciousness. I was able to access that craft, communicate with them as conscious energy orbs, and then go our own separate way. So um, that's the level of communication of consciousness that they they have, and they created their own, their own conscious craft itself for traveling uh, using their own thought and consciousness. 
so quite highly developed beings. But the, I think, again, it was they don't sit me down there in the classroom. That was a lesson to teach me that we are able to do that ourselves if we have an understanding of how to do it. Um, so, uh, so that's that's the catch way too. How do we how do we teach this to other people? How do we learn it ourselves so we can do that? Will and the other question I I have is there's eight different beings. Do they have a, a specific function in your education as you're here? as an ambassador to wake up humanity so that we all have this uh, ability and that we, you know, basically evolve past the need to war and to have people starving in the streets. Is there, yeah, is there something that they're think, teaching you? I think the message is we all have these abilities. We have been kept in the dark deliberately, denied our education, as it were, uh, and for us to develop further than we need to... Uh, uh, be able to learn these abilities or relearn these abilities that perhaps we did have them because we lost them on what sort of um, But then they, they, they've given me an actual uh, mission. I didn't want to mention that at the moment. I'd like to mention that at the end if that's possible. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, if I went on to a, an actual encounter I had with Ra, uh, just moving on chronologically now, I would be about mm-hmm. 32, well, 32 years of age. I was a, a police officer in England at the time. And I remember quite clearly this particular event. Uh, I'd just done a double shift where I finished at 10 o'clock at night, come home, and I'm back at work at 5 then again in the morning. And then I come up the holiday at 2 o'clock. I'm usually extremely tired when I've done that double shift. And uh, I usually go to bed for a couple of hours so my wife would come home at 5 o'clock and then we would get up and share our evening together. On this occasion, I got into bed and I was extremely tired and um, a shadow person came through the door and he looked at me and beckoned me. Now, I've seen these shadow people many times, usually just out of the corner of your eye. They appear behind a sofa or a piece of furniture and then disappear when you look at them. On this occasion, he looked directly at me uh, and beckoned me to go through the door. I told him I was tired and I didn't want to go through the door with him and I told him to go away and come back when I was almost a tired. So he went through the door, he walked away. He came back a few moments later, beckoned me again, and I said, oh, I'm not getting up, I'm tired, come back later. So he went away, went through the door, came back through the door a few moments later, and I said to him, you're so persistent, you obviously want to show me something. I said, right, okay, uh, show. So he would then walked through the door, which was obviously closed. I, I didn't get dressed, I just got up, I opened the bedroom door, walked through, and on the landing there was a beam of light, and it went from the floor to the ceiling. Now, I said to myself, well, you've gone to all this trouble to get me to see this beam of light, so I'll stand in it. So I stood in it, and I can describe the beam of light as, if you've ever seen Star Trek, when they beam people down onto the planet, you get this beam of light mm-hmm. sparkling from floor to ceiling. It was just like that when I stood in. As I stood in it, I got a feeling of euphoria. Uh, I'm no longer tired. And I stood there for a few moments. And then a voice said to me, I am your father. You are your father's son. Uh, and at that time, I had no idea who it was. I was, uh, uh, in fact, confused by it. I thought it was probably my deceased father. And I thought that for quite a while. Um, and then after a few more moments, there was no conversation, just those few words. And then the light disappeared from the ceiling and the floor sequentially and disappeared uh, directly in my stomach. And at that point, I was absolutely euphoric, a lot of energy. I didn't go back to bed. I got dressed. I took my dogs out. I told my wife about the event when she came home. And she said, I knew there was something different about you today because normally when you've done a, a double shift, you're tired, you don't want to get out. And here we are having a meal out for the evening. Um, and I found out later that was actually Ra that uh, came to speak to me when I was 32. Um, and I, I've, all, I've met him quite a few times now. But uh, uh, that was my second encounter with him, the first when I was 14 and the second when I was 32. So uh, um, I think he's just keeping that, that connection open there. Wow. So uh, go ahead, T.G. Do you have any questions or feedback? Sorry, say that again. Well, I'm Three I'm, Are you there? 
Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I like I like Kevin, and I like his story, and I'd like to see how it all works together with people like you and me doing this. Uh, we're writing books, and we're doing radio shows, and obviously he is too. So I'm just getting into this seven years, almost eight years, June 3rd with you, Janet. But what does all this mean? Because are we all supposed to compare notes with all these various extraterrestrials? I see you put up some pictures here of various people yes. here with Kevin. But what are we? What are we supposed to do with this, Kevin? Uh, are we supposed to talk to our higher guides and our angels and our ET friends and well, let's find out all the levels? Because that's what we're doing with our alien contact group. Janet and I have started is talking to each other about the various. Uh, how we can create alienology, meaning the study of aliens through us as experiencers with the various okay. levels of existence. Help us out well, here. Well, I find that when I've met with quite a few different groups now of experiencers, and we're all at different levels, and every time I go and speak with a, a group of experiencers, I learn a little bit more, and, and vice versa, by uh, discussing it, by talking openly about our encounters. Uh, it helps us all learn. And I, they haven't given me a specific task to teach people or anything like that. I'm not a teacher. But all they've asked me to do is share my story, share my interactions with people. And they said it doesn't matter if they believe you or not. It's the important thing is you share your stories and interactions, uh, which is what, I, what I'm doing today, I suppose. And I'm pleased mm-hmm. that Janet invited me onto the show to do that. But as I say, since I've started talking out my interactions, there are many, many other people like uh, Teresa, like Janet. Uh, we all have our own interactions and our own understandings. And getting together and speaking with people here that's listening who are probably able to travel outside of the body and they've never spoken to anybody about it. And now they understand that you know it can be a normal part of who we are and uh, uh, perhaps they can find someone to speak about it. I've joined the many groups now that are talking about these things, and I think that's probably the uh, um, the main message here, really. And uh, as I say, I wouldn't have spoken out about it. I think it was just about two or three years ago now that uh, I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and uh, as I came back from the bathroom, there was a bright light outside the um, uh, bedroom window and then the light came into the bedroom and then the whole bedroom lit up like a myriad of butterflies um, and then as they disappeared oh, they materialized at the bottom of the bed and after our pleasantries talking to one another I asked what was the reason for the visit and the reason they said was we want to, they, they wanted me to talk about uh, their interactions with me or my interaction with them they wanted me to write about my interactions. And I said, well, I don't mind talking about it, but I'm not really a writer. And they said, well, you will write two books, and we will give you some information to include in those books, which they have done. I'm currently working on the second one. Uh, but again, they just emphasize, just share the story, talk to people about it. And, and since I've done that, in that short period of time, I've now been speaking to uh, different conferences, uh, I've written three or four articles that have been published, uh, and I'm working on the second book. Um, so, the, and people are interested. I'm surprised at the amount of interest. However, if they hadn't have come into the bedroom a few years ago, uh, my wife knew about my interactions and my brother knew about my interactions, but uh, I hadn't spoke to anybody else about it, and I would have gone to my grave uh, with the information that I had. So, um, and I'm sure there are others like me who have all these interactions and do not speak about it for fear of ridicule or whatever. So, so TJ, um, Kevin, Kevin is in Florida, so he presented at the free conference. But Florida is a big state. Just because you're in the same state doesn't mean you're close to each other. What part of Florida are you in, Kevin? I'm just west of Orlando, about 40 minutes west of Orlando. Okay, and so he was at the, you spoke at the, um, well, yeah, the, the Edgar free conference. Foundation, Where was that held? Free, that was held in yeah. Miami. I think that was the second one. Uh, Ray Hernandez 
he hosts that uh, conference. And, um, uh, he gets speakers from all over. In fact, I met another uh, experiencer there, Lauren Kerr. She was from Australia, and she was speaking there, and she's had interactions with the ETs in four years of age. Um, and then when you get together, uh, we learn different things. But she's been talk, taught sorry, about, um, oh, what do they call it now, sacred geometry. And she can talk mm-hmm. to scientists now about sacred geometry. I don't know anything about that. They haven't touched on that. But a lot of the other information that she's been given is exactly the same as what I've been given. Uh, and I say more and more experiences I'm meeting and we share this information, uh, it would appear that they're educating more and more people in different aspects of who we are. Yeah, it just, well, that's it good. just makes me curious. To what end? Yeah, go ahead, TJ. You take us the talking stick. Well, I think, like to add? I, th- I just think it's good because you and I have uh, interviewed Ray Hernandez when he was first coming out years ago, and that was free, and, and uh, I, it, this is where we're going is people are talking to each other, and it, I guess it's like back in the day when they had hunters and gatherers at that particular point, you know, when – the earth rebuilds itself, and uh, you have to start over again. Or they go away and let us learn ourselves. I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I do know that I interact with other beings in their various levels. And each person I talk to, you know, we're getting where we may not see the same ones or have the same message or understand the government understands certain ones, and some don't. And some people have access, and some don't. And I'm sort of glad that Kevin came on because uh, – Janet, we need to maybe make a support fellowship group, and that maybe that's why we're going to call them alienologists versus ufologists. I don't study the UFOs. I study the beings that study the beings that have met, you know. So yeah. a lot of us are, I don't know if you say we're, we're more human, but see, I, I've only come out recently talking about, even though I've been writing since 2007 books, but I quit. But Janet kept me involved with her. Right for years and doing this radio show and now it's evolving we're going to try to evolve maybe into uh, YouTube maybe I don't know if people want to look at us or not but we don't we yeah, don't know I where think, this is taking us I think they do I was asked to go on a an interview with uh, uh, Alfred uh, Lambermont Weber. Weber yeah a few weeks ago oh, yeah, we know and, uh, and uh-huh. he put the interview he put the interview on uh, YouTube I think it's about 5,300 views on it which is amazing. Really. Yeah. Um, just yeah. Put, fact, put, he did me once put, like that. Sorry? He, he took it down. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, sorry, so um, so you're getting a lot of hits. Now, do you, do you put your, uh, do you have a, yeah, you have a website. Can people write to you about what do you uh, do? Yeah, yeah, you can contact me through you. the website if they're interested. And I've put some... Uh, three YouTubes uh, on the website today uh, so people can watch that. One is the talk I gave at uh, the Free Foundation last year. One is a channel I gave in Tampa at a CE5 meeting and the other one is the interview with uh, Alfred Lambermont Weber uh, earlier on. Oh, we'll go check that out. So if you go to my website, you you have your own YouTube channel? No, I don't have my own YouTube channel yet. No, I just uh, I put them on my own website, which is www.kevinjamesbriggs.com. And if you go on there, you can see the um, those particular uh, YouTubes that uh, um, I put them on YouTube, but I don't have a channel. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. Sure. You're, you're just copying people. So. so what do you think about what's going on with the... The Pentagon and the Navy, and they're saying that um, they well, want their people to report them. What's your insight on that? Um, I think that the the governments are trying to do a soft disclosure. Yeah. Um, oh, you broke up. Say that again. Say that again. I'm I, sorry, you I broke up. Okay, I said that the uh, I think the government are trying to a soft disclosure. They've been hiding the fact that we are in, uh, extraterrestrials uh, engaging our planet, engaging our uh, citizens, as it were, 
uh, and interacting with us. And uh, I was told that by my group of ETs, they are doing more interactions now with individuals because the governments are not listening to what the ETs want. They told me that they've demonstrated they can uh, uh, activate the nuclear missiles. They've told me that they can demonstrate to deactivate the nuclear missiles. And they've even demonstrated the fact that they can shoot them down from the uh, sky. And they've also shown a large fleet flying from the north down through Russia, down through the Balkans, through to the Mediterranean and back up again. And uh, they're still not taking any notice. Uh, they know that we're here. And uh, so now we are educating the people and the true disclosure will come from the people itself. That's what they're telling me. That makes sense. That makes sense. So and they said the, the only timeline. time they would the only Go time ahead. they would intervene is if the governments decided to use uh, nuclear weapons and they won't allow that. They won't allow us to destroy ourselves and they won't allow us to destroy the earth. Um, but they're hoping that uh, um, we can get uh, together with the, our government representatives uh, to come to some agreement for a full, what they call uh, a reveal. I'd love it. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> you know, it's like, when are we going to finally do this? Right. So, well, exactly. Um, pardon? I said, yes, when are we going to do this? They have given me some dates. Uh, they want to um, uh, meet with our United Nations and uh, reveal themselves to the United Nations. Uh, they told me this a, a couple of years ago. Uh, because of that, I contacted the United Nations to see if there's any protocols in place. And I spoke to the officer of Nicholas Hedman, the chairman of the Outer Space Affairs Committee. I did receive a response, and he said there was no a protocol in place at this moment in time. Uh, so I contacted him again, and asked him how would we implement a protocol so the ETs can uh, make contact with our United Nations. And they did receive a reply. They said that um, we'd have to get the member state to make a mandate proposal to that effect. So because of that, I was actually asked by the ETs to contact uh, uh, then Nikki Haley, our ambassador to the uh, UN. Uh, I did uh, not receive a reply, which wasn't unexpected. But then after that, they, uh, then after that, Ra contacted me one Sunday morning, uh, I think it was last year sometime, and asked me to follow up with that by writing to the President of the United States in relation to a protocol being, being implemented by our uh, UN ambassador. Uh, I didn't receive a reply, I wasn't expecting one, but I did what I was asked, and I mailed the letter out on the 29th of July last year, I remember the date because it's my wife's birthday, so I'll never forget that. And I know that there are other groups <laughs> working towards the uh, mandate proposal. I've been in touch with those, and there are individuals also working towards this, and I've been in touch with those as well. Um, they've actually given me a date now for the reveal. Uh, I can give you a brief explanation about that. What's the date? Yes. Yeah. yeah as, uh, well, let me tell you the story first. And uh, I okay. was... Um, let me see. February the 1st, this year, I was fast asleep. Uh, going to bed about 11 o'clock. I was in a deep sleep. And uh, I was woken up um, by the ETs, by a large noise, what appeared to be uh, a trust above the home of him. And uh, then I woke up, and uh, I looked at the clock, and it was February the 1st, 1 1 1. And there's always a, a synchronicity when they give me information. So I, I got right. up, I walked into the bathroom, and they said, right, we uh, uh, want to uh, reveal ourselves to the United Nations. They gave me uh, a location, and I asked them about the, uh, the rest of the information, and they said they would give me that at a later date. However, I then said to them, um, right, you've given me the uh, location, which is the United Nations, uh, can you confirm by turning the street light off that's directly outside my bathroom window? Uh, just to confirm that that information you give me is correct. So the street light went off immediately. I've no problems with that. That's oh, wow. common, common synchronicity when I'm speaking to them. They will do things to confirm what they're saying. So then I go back into bed, 
and uh, I'm woken up at 7.45. Obviously, it's still the same day, February the 1st, and I get up, I go into the bathroom. They give me the second part of the uh, information. We, we've got the location. We've now got the, they give me the date, and they give me the exact time. The craft will appear, and then when it will last. So I go back into the bathroom, bearing in mind it's daylight now, bright daylight. So I repeat the whole message, the location, the time the craft will appear, the time the craft will land, and the actual date. And I said, if this is correct, can you turn that street light on, bearing in mind it's daylight? The street light came on immediately. So I'm happy with the dates and the information. A few days later, I was asked again by the Council of Eight to contact a group of eight people who deal with these things and... Uh, I contacted them all by email, gave them the information, gave them the time of day. I had a small meeting with a small group of them, not all of them, and they decided at that time to keep the date between the group of eight people here uh, for reasons of security. So I agree with that, and, uh, but there are eight people that know this particular date, and we are working towards that now with a, a mandate. Uh, I can't do anything else in relation to that. So I'm hoping that I know the ETs will be in contact to the groups that I've been in contact. Okay, so you know the date and time, and you can't tell us. Is that what you're saying? Hello? 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 Uh, I can hear you. He must have dropped off. Look, can you see your screen? Is his number there? Yeah. No, you... he dropped off. I'll, I'll call him back. Oh, okay. I'll call him. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. He's really not allowed to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hello? Hi, Janet. Hi. Boy, they don't want you to tell us, I guess. <laughs> no, that's quite true. I'm sure they're listening and monitoring to all our conversations, and they turned it off oh, immediately. Well, that's finished. Seriously, <laughs> you need to tell us so we can tell the world. Yeah, we're yeah. really bored with all this crap and impatient, and we need a better reality one that's not like. Well, if you go if you go on my, my website, it's, all the information is on there. Apart from the actual date, we've got the location, which is the. Uh, um, and if you look at the interviews, apparently we've been here before with a guy called Stanley Fullman. And, and on that occasion, apparently, I mean, I, I can't confirm this by Alfred Lambermont, that the craft did appear at the time and date stated by uh, um, Stanley Fullman oh, at so the it's United Nations. No, yeah, ah, that was before, that was in. That was in 2015, and it would appear right. he was given the same information then that I've been given now. And I'm only confident in the information because of my 57 years, 56 years, whatever, of continual right. contact with these beings, and I'm very comfortable. I mean, they've even, you know, they, they show themselves to my friends, they show themselves to my wife. One of them moves my wife's uh, articles around the house. Uh, he'll open the blinds when she closes them. She'll put something down and he'll move it. And I asked him why he did that, and he said, uh, for two or three reasons. He said, one, I enjoy teasing her, and he says he thinks it's funny. But he said there's a serious side that your wife needs to know that we are here and we are amongst you. Mm -hmm. And she understands that, and she supports me uh, in my endeavors now. And, uh, and then I showed them to my friends who have been skeptics for 60-odd years. When they came to visit, they showed him a craft. And then they showed him some orbs that he was taking a photograph. Uh, and then he had an out-of-body experience while he was in my home. So, and again, I asked them why they do this. It's because once people have some interaction with them, it alters their whole perspective. So, and they're increasing their contact with, and I say my friend's been a skeptic for 65 years. So, uh, but he's now changed. He's very interested in what's going on. And we need to get the message out there. And that's why I'm speaking, and I'm pleased I've been invited to speak on uh, your show uh, to get the message out. So uh, it, it, it well, cannot be denied. Pardon? We're very excited that 
you're here and sharing this with us. Um, right. did, they, did they, they tell you where they were you. located? I might have missed that. Did they tell you what level of existence in their consciousness? Because there, can you track them in the cosmology of the universe or another universe? Or did they give you any location as to where they congregate or have similar? Well, well they, they tell me now they are here amongst us in our uh, solar system. They are here in great numbers, apparently. Um, but I'm able to meet them. I'm able to... Uh, um, they, uh, quite a, about a year ago, I think it was, I was traveling on the astral plane, Orton D, and I communicate with them on a regular basis on there. And on one occasion, Orton D came above me in a conscious cast. And uh, they invited me on board. I went on board. We were having the interaction, and I was traveling as pure conscious energy, all as they do. And then uh, uh, we had a bit, a bit of a laugh, a bit of a joke. And I said, Kevin, why don't you uh, build a craft? and uh, travel further. I said to them, well, um, yeah, it's all right for you. You've got a partner, D. You know, you're extraterrestrials, and you'll have somebody that you've got the ability to build these crafts and travel where you want. And I said, uh, I don't have that ability. And they said to me, yes, you do, Kevin. I said, well, how would I do? They said, by using thought and consciousness. So uh, we had some other words. I left the craft. I came back home, and uh, I went back into my body, as it were. And then the following night, I thought, right, I'll see if I can do this. So I thought about creating a craft. I thought about the consciousness, creating a conscious craft, and I was able to do it. It was a rudimentary craft. But I was inside a craft. I was traveling through the cosmos, and I could see these small lights going past at great speed, and I thought they were stars. When I looked closer, they were galaxies going past. And I, at that moment, I got quite scared, frightened. I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I've built this craft. I don't know how to fly it. I'm going back home. So I thought, go back home. I went back home. The following day, <laughs> I decided to do it again, try and create a craft. But this time, I had a plan. I designed it by thought before I built it. And then I uh, decided which direction I was going to go. I looked at a star chart. So this time when I went to bed, I thought about it. I thought about creating a craft, which was a better craft, a bigger craft, a conscious craft. It had a navigational system that I understood because I designed it, and uh, I was able to travel. Now, I picked a particular galaxy, which is Andromeda. I got to Andromeda. I got to a planet. I flew around the planet, and then I came back. So we have these abilities. Um, but again, as I stress, they don't put me in a classroom. They give me an idea, and then I have to do it myself. So we Great. all have these abilities. I've been to just, council meetings where we, as a group mind, assemble. We create with our minds where we're meeting. And right, okay. Wherever we are, and then it's there for the purpose of the meeting, and then we right. return back to our different planets and bodies. It's gone. And you know, but it's a group co-creation. Um, so that's very, but, yeah. very similar, though, isn't it? You're doing that by thought and consciousness, so it's exactly the mm-hmm. same. Would, would you agree? Yeah, it's exactly the yeah, same, right? Yeah, yeah. And and yeah. so so sometimes you're going, you're you're getting in this 3D realm. What is this a crap? And they're saying, no, we're just this is just for our convenience. We're creating this. The group mind is creating this, so we have something that appears, you know, similar to what we're used to, you know, in our lives. But we don't need it. We could just be, you know, orbs. <laughs> but we'd like we to could be, yes. Because awesome we could just be pure conscious power. energy. I think we, we choose to be in this physical. Yeah. We choose to be here uh, for whatever reason. Yeah, oftentimes we create wonderful, beautiful buildings, you know, in, in Greek columns and, you know, they, they're... The magical looking, you know, we create things, yes. castles, and but we don't need them. We just we're, we're creative beings. And yeah, so we yeah, it's quite true. Create. Have you and ever had an experience? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Kevin. Finish. I was just going to say, yeah, that's why we have 
uh, our artists, our musicians, because they create using thought and consciousness and create beautiful things for us to see and to listen to. It's as you say, we are creators ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So TJ, have you had experiences where you create things with your mind? Oh, of course. We we all do every day. We can't do anything unless we think about it first. (laughs) Can't even go to the bathroom. Your body only tells you so much and (laughs) and your nervous system and the automatic part of you, but sure, that we all do. We're all consciously thinking Mm -hmm. it's how do we expose our memories and memories of past lives and future lives? And like you heard him say Andromeda, and that was great because not too many people talk about that. And that's one of my locations, M31. Really? Okay. That I discuss. Yeah, I discussed that with Stan Freeman. He's passed, but it was in the, one of my – the very first book I ever wrote. Janet's got a copy. It's got a lot of strange ways of putting stuff together that didn't – but I thought I was trying to, you know, explain my – while I was doing what I was doing, because I was at that time, I had all these levels of existence and working with these right. and had thought I had a mission and all that. So yeah, I've, I'm one of those beings that lives sort of like you do. I've got stories and missions and things and working with. So you have you have a great a, a great understanding of all this, then, Teresa. You were uh, very much like myself. Well, I just wonder what all it means, but I've, I've tried to ask them, and they just said, keep doing what you're doing. So <laughs> it's like oh. I think that each one of us is a separate whatever out there, and maybe we we come over and over, and then we go to other planets and take, you know, because I, I do this at night, and I go and visit other places, and it's just as real as okay. here. So I call myself a bilocator, but, uh, you know, I, I've only had a recent breakthrough with somebody showing up right in my face, so... But I heard uh, another guy a while ago call it, you know, when it shows up right in front of your face, I had a being show up right in front of my face in a reality wow. that was right in front of me. And I've never had a reality inside a reality right in front of me. It's like the door that uh, – what the, the incident that happened here where I am now in Florida it, recently, and I told Jan about it, was just like when you go stand at that stone and there's a door portal there and the mm-hmm. stone door and the – You've seen it down in Mexico or somewhere South America. But yeah. you know what I mean. It's like I mean, something's yeah. supposed to be – another reality is supposed to be in there, like in that stone, right? The portal yeah. door. They can walk so, through the wall, as it were, and go into another part, into another reality. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I experienced, but it was right here. I had uh, had a funny sleeping pattern lately because – uh, well, my daughter died recently, so I'm wondering, you know, if that has something to do with uh, some days I sleep to, you know, a lot, and then other days mm-hmm. I don't sleep because I got stuff on my mind. But it, I never was like that till recently. But I understand what it means to be balanced and safe. But this happened when I, I had stayed up most of the night writing and then fell asleep during the day. But I was at uh, Beta Alpha. I was in probably – I wouldn't even Theta yet, Beta Alpha, somewhere between Alpha and Theta, right? I wasn't asleep and I wasn't awake. I wasn't in deep state right. at Delta. So uh, it caught me off guard because I've never had a reality where I was laying down, but I felt like I was standing up. It was uh, oh. like I was – I wasn't a dream, it wasn't conscious, and it wasn't sleep. So I told Jan I had a breakthrough because it was another level of existence where the right. one met the other. Now, I have been taken before where I went uh, up to Andromeda, where you can't tell if your body's here or there. But this was a this is like you were talking about consciousness, but a full reality where a guy showed up in a military uniform with uh, full gear and a black – Beret on and had a German Shepherd dog, just as real as you know yeah. anything you can see right now, right on the. And I'm like, I've done ETs and I've done ships and I've done big ships and I've had them come down in St. Louis and I've had them come down a, around Mars and uh, Andromeda, but uh, this reality stuff and consciousness is where to me I think it's much more. Uh, curious. It's like a whole other part of your consciousness wakes up or something. And I'm not talking what we're talking about, the awakening aware of the ascension age, and we were all supposed to be going multidimensional in, in particles and waves and rhythms and vibrations and, and microwave radio waves and, you know, infrared and all the stuff we've been doing for 30 or 40 years, you know, 
but just an instant, there's a reality right at my nose. I mean, it was so I, w- I was just standing there, and he was standing there with me, and then he just, we both went, ah, and we smiled because we were new what it, it was reality, but we uh, bumped each other. It, we were in different realities, so I don't know what that is. I, I've never seen it, uh, you know, other than that portal. So that, you know how you try your brain, you are automatically go into trying to make logic out of something you that yeah, you never experienced. Yeah. So that's why I thought the minute what I tried to go, you know, your brain thinks, try to find what it was. I went to, I got the immediate reaction to that pyramid or that door, the portal opening from one reality into another, right where I was at that moment. So that's why I was wondering. I called it a breakthrough, but that was just for me. And it, yeah. how do you explain that? It's like the beginning when you start waking up to the ascension age of the ascension awareness of the awakening of the various levels and you start going through the metaphysics, right? And the quantum physics. And so, but have you ever, have you had anything like that? Just instantly right at your face, a whole nother reality appear? Um, no, I haven't. I did have a, uh, I was totally talking on the astral plane once, but I've never had that experience that you've had. I think that's a, an amazing experience, but uh, no, the one that I coming back on the astral plane and I just stuck, dropped off in the back of a small craft and there were two greys actually playing the craft and they both looked around at me sat in the back as it were and said to one another telepathically what's he doing here and then I realised then that I shouldn't be there so I, I left but they were actually de- delivering minerals to the, uh, to the moon I don't know where they were coming from it was a transporter ship for minerals so I came back to my body uh, in a, at home and then uh, I was woken up by this tall grey. He was quite a big bloke. And he told me, he said, uh, I shouldn't interfere. And uh, he was responsible for the, uh, um, those greys and the craft and everything. So he warned me not to interfere. So he was in my reality, in my bedroom, warning me not to interfere, which I did, I to say, accidentally. But, uh, so, you know, they are about me. Whether they're in different dimensions, multi dimensions, uh, they are here, they are amongst us, you know. Um, um, but yeah, yeah your yeah, story is amazing. That's a big breakthrough. You know, I'm going to talk. I think the only person doing this research is uh, the guy, Janet, the one I get mixed up all the time. We talked about him on the earlier show. Fred Cameron. Uh, not Graham. Fred Cameron. That's him. Oh, Grant Cameron, so yeah. Graham, I've heard of him, yeah. I've seen quite a few of his yeah, YouTube videos. I think he's things, doing yeah. a new book. But- we, I told him to call me because I know he's doing one. He got in touch with me, Janet. He told me to email him. I, I don't know which uh, electrical device, if it was Facebook or mm. what, but it just I'll, appeared I'll, on my computer. I'll share that with you. Before. Yeah, I'll share that with you. When we're off air, we'll oh. put that in the public. Yeah. No, no, but anyway, yeah, yeah, well, but I think uh, – I think we're all on the same page and we're waking up to a new reality, but how are we going to, we're just starting to talk about it. So a lot of the, as we, as we birth the reality wave that yes, we all know alien civilizations exist and we all know that we are they, and a lot of us are coming and going at various realities. And I was telling somebody earlier, I don't really call myself like I start off like a walk-in then an alien ET hybrid and then a, a what they call me, a, a what do they call me, Janet? With, with I've got my, I've got titanium in uh-huh. a cyborg with Ira Pass cyborg. cyborg. So cyborg. now I'm I was doing the bilocating. Now I'm doing reality in my face of another reality. So I'm like, whoa! So not only do I travel this universe and this reality with other beings, but now this is new. So you know, of course, in our you you know the psychic ET world and the uh, tarot readers and all that, we say the Akashic field, but now we're going to be talking about real dimensions showing up in your face, like you walked up to the TV, but a <laughs> big huge TV is right in your face, and you're like, where did this reality come from? Now, I've done that when you said Andromeda, and that's what I got. So, yeah, Janet, he has dropped two things at least, but I heard Andromeda, and, oh, also the grays in the, and I heard you mention, you know, I, I listened for key words, but you said a mineral mining, Janet. He he knows that. So uh, right. I had leaked something, and Janet said, "But Teresa, that's still classified. That's not known." And 
the like the, I call it the matrix. So sometimes I know things, but I don't know that it's not known, and I don't know what I'm supposed to share and what I'm not supposed uh, to share. Well, How well, do you deal with that? They've described the matrix to me, and uh, they described it like a, a net that they showed me. They showed me what it looked like. It's around, completely covers the earth, and it's uh, hexag- hexagonal in shapes like a, a honeybee hive, but it covers the whole earth. And that stops a lot of people from leaving or a lot of people from coming through that matrix. Now, when I met my friend down in, in Lakeland, uh, Rebecca not, um, Renfro, she met the same two beings, Ort and Dee, and she was given the same information about this uh, matrix. On the, she called it, what was a different name? She called it the, the grid. They called it the grid, and they showed it to her. Oh, yeah, but I know they, about the grid and hooking it back up. We're supposed to hook well, it back yeah, up. Okay, well, the, the matrix is the same, apparently. It's the same word for the same thing, mm-hmm, the grid right. and the matrix. Uh, but interesting that my the two beings that I'm interacting with, one of the two of the beings I interact with, are also interacting with Rebecca, and uh, they're given the same information. We both met up, compared our notes, and it was just unbelievable, you know. So, uh, um they're obviously extending who they're contacting, and uh, it's just a matter of time. I don't know what the percentage of the population is that realizes that the ETs are here, they are amongst us. Um, obviously, with all the governments know and the, all the elites know, um, but because I think of all the electronic communications now, like YouTube and Twitter, I don't go on them all, but Twitter and all these Instagrams and things, the, the message is getting out, and the government can't stop it. Right, the, that's what I think. And that's, yeah, I think that's, that's why it's they're beyond the critical mass. Right, and I think that's why they're making those announcements. Um, yeah, well, they so, told yeah, me they're waiting on us. Yeah, they informed me that we uh, we need one percent of the population to understand consciousness and the fact that the ETs are here and they want to communicate with us. And once we reach that level, it's a tipping level. It will tip the balance. And it will change the whole of the consciousness of humanity itself, like the story of the hundred monkeys. And you notice this with each individual, because for years I was supposed to be part of the, I think what Janet calls a disclosure. She was out at all these events, and I was, and I wasn't going right. to them. But, but I, I was talking to certain key people, like Stan Friedman, about the Majestic Twelve book I had, and mm. you know I said it's on my dressing room where I got it. I said. I don't, don't know. I just, I don't know where I got it. I just, I got it. <laughs> it's red and black ink. And he asked me about the Z and it was raised, stuff like that. Robert Wood's son, I talked to him. But they were investigating. We were do, and doing certain investigations on Marcel and that. And, you know, I went to Roswell. But so people were walking around in 3D form tracking certain levels in certain investigations. But I wasn't doing it for anybody else, just me, I thought. But it could have been the extraterrestrials guiding me. Do you feel like they tell you? But see, mine wouldn't really tell me anything unless I was off planet and on the spacecraft, like you said, up there around Andromeda, or leaving okay. here and going up there. Does that make well, sense? I, so yeah, it does make it's a total sense. And uh, I, uh, if I feel as if I'm getting stuck, I ask them for some more information, and then they'll just give me some more information. It just appears, or they'll give me it telepathically, or they'll give me a download. Um, you know, it's contact really, and uh, even if I get fed up and say I'm not getting it off, why don't you give me some more information? Stop moving forward, then they'll give me some more information. You know, so uh, uh, without adding, not just me, I'm a small jigsaw, large jigsaw. So apart from that, it's a whole collective of cells and and Janet, uh that have been doing this for many years. I'm very new to this. But I've got this specific message of the uh, contact of the uh, uh, um, uh, the group of eight and the the mission they're wanting to reveal themselves to our uh, government representatives, and they do stress that they want to reveal themselves to our government representatives. And as I said before, we have been here in the past about it. It was Alfred Ross that said that when I did about a month ago. And um, so for many people with information, but again, going back to what we said earlier, you know, I, uh, Janet and Teresa there and myself, we speak, we share information, 
and it, it, um, it reinforces what we already know. Does that make sense? I guess so, because you're the first yeah. one I've said that they're here. But if I'm here and I'm going up there, then I don't know how to classify myself because I am a human. I was born here, at least part of yeah. me. But I don't really separate myself like I used to. Like my separate no. was like a walk-in. Then my separation was a, a hybrid. And, and it's almost uh, okay. like as I as I grow with knowledge and strength to share who I believe I am or whatever your reality or your consciousness is. Whatever you decide to create. Yeah, yeah. Have you grown with these beings? Because mine appeared at different times in my life, usually educating me or training me or telling me that, you know, it was time to do this or that. And I listened, but it wasn't until I got with my husband for 20 years. And oddly enough, it was 20 years from, May 10th, when I got my first clearance with the government, working with the government from 67 to 87, that was 20 years because on May 10th, 87, I was a rehire on a Thursday, and today's a Thursday. But I haven't met anybody like you. Uh, Janet's the only one that's been able to entertain me for this many years. (laughs) So, but Janet, he's the closest. I'll send it to Jonathan. Well, we're, yeah, you know, we're so, talking at this level, and there's people saying, oh, I've got abducted. It's like, oh, no, come on, let's not be abducted. But, you know, I, I do I do counseling with them, and it's fine if they're abducted, you know. But like you said, I have never been abducted. I'm having these experiences, and they're amazing, and they're positive, and, you know, I'm like you. It's like, yeah, we're, we've got this disclosure coming, and it's, it's upon us, and we're reaching critical mass, and and I keep getting the, the fear, I call it fear porn. Oh, no, more fear porn. Let's be afraid. But I don't, I'm just so blissed out. I was like, there's nothing to fear. This is coming really soon here. Oh, so I wanted to ask you. Um, so you can't give us a specific, specific date, but can you give us a year? It's next year sometime. I can give that. I'm sure they, uh, uh, the group that I'm working with uh, won't mind that. Uh, next year is a big year, so uh, uh, so we'll have to see. But it is dep- they do tell me it's dependent on this mandate protocol being implemented at the UN. Uh, but I know, I'll say, uh, two or three groups that are knocking on the door as we speak. Uh, and at some point, well, they're going to have to open up the door. Um, in fact, I read an article well, today. They, have, they, go to they had my husband speak at the Congress of the, of the United States and him and I both had to go through the United Nations. But just because you go there and you're there doesn't mean that people even get or grok in any language what you're trying to say. It, 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 and I don't understand that with Reagan, too. So people can hear, but they may not can see. And uh, various groups, apparently, because these beings, I felt they said they were universal. And they were out there working with the various galaxies, and that's why I was told I was in the uh, Allied Council Intergovernment Intergalactic, because on the planet I was called intergovernmental relations, right, and then okay. working with the pyramids that was Supreme Council in Europe, right. and then off planet it was Allied Council Intergover wait intergalactic relations. So that's where I've just started with uh, UFO Association versus Alien Con versus Allied Command now. But they, Janet and I had my husband working with the Allied Command and the patch we wore in the black uniforms and the gray uniforms in space. But uh, Ken wants to do that. He wants to bring out the story in reality. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it seems like depending on what group – there's so many different groups, alien groups. So yeah. I'm forming alienologists now. Okay, well, that sounds good to me. Chapter. Yeah. So you like me, that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I think that's good. Can I be a member? Can I be the first member? Sure. What, sure. That'd be we're awesome. All, we're all you, yeah. Out. <laughs> Janet. <laughs> Janet, let's do Let's let me be the first member. Well, Janet can be your first member. I'll be your second member. How's that? Okay, okay, we'll do that. I, I wanted to ask Wait, you. Janet wants reason. to be the we're first member. Of we're going to oh, give I'm numbers. Not a founding member. But Janet, you, we're, we're founding but Janet, members. you got to hear that. 
But Janet, you got to hear that. He asked. Do you get it? I Nobody understand. said that. He just asked. So of I course understand. you can. That's awesome. Well, you know Ken uh, and that guy Luke Trollson heard us. So now there's there's uh, just so you know there's uh, Ken uh, Ralph Kennedy Johnston Sr. the astronaut that Grumman dude, and uh, then there's uh, Tom, <laughs> but he's a believer. Janet and me, so that's four. But now we were going to do the show tomorrow night, so maybe this gentleman should come on because he's already at that level like you and me. I mean, he understands. That's, he grows. That's it. the ambassador level. That's what I'm saying. We have, so you know, we can catalog. Well, let him come on tomorrow night. Sure, it, it, I it's, catalog. Well, we'll see. Kevin, Kevin, are you busy <laughs> tomorrow? What we're doing is we're, we're creating. Yeah, so um, yeah, we can we can discuss this. Oh, uh, we're we're doing another. Yeah, discuss it amongst yourself. I'm I'm free most times. I you know I work from home okay. and uh, uh, you know so anytime you want to discuss anything, if you want me to come on the show or anything, or or just send me an email. You've got my email, uh, and I'm happy to talk about it to anybody at any time. You know, as long as I'm not uh, uh, I've got some prior engagement. So yeah, I'm very flexible. Uh, I say I'm. Uh, That'd be great. Well. Let me explain what what my vision is. Yeah, what my vision tomorrow is um, is is what we're doing on Fridays is the Allied Command Organization, which is people that are conscious and aware that the extraterrestrials walk among us and have interacted with them. And uh, the the three members, uh, me, Teresa, and um, Ken Johnston, have had interactions in the secret space program. So, right. oh, you know, yeah. like you said, the ET so is proving things to you. So, yeah, so you've had interactions. So the ET is proving. So they took my big aha was because I asked for it. I said, oh, what are you going to prove this to me? Because they would prove it to me in all kinds of little ways. But, no, I wanted the real big one. So they took me to an underground base underneath Johnson Atoll, and they had a thousand Anunnaki and a bunch of other species, and they took me to this giant dragon, and the dragon manifested in an avatar in front of us, so I could look in its eyes. And anyway, I had this incredible experience, and then they returned me, and they go, "Is that good enough? Now do you believe it?" <laughs> you know, and it's like, and my boyfriend witnessed it. And I said, "Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it," because I'm, you know, the doubting Thomas of my own experiences. Oh, that couldn't have been real. But part of me always knew it was real. Like you were saying, when you're out of body, traveling in astrally. I've been traveling astrally since I was a very young child, and I knew it was real. But I think why we get conflicted is because we come back to this world, and if we try to tell people, we get clobbered. They go, yeah, oh, you're just not Exactly. Yeah, we oh, you're we get ridiculed and say we're delusional. Uh, but then a friend of mine described it. I said to him, I said, look, we have all this knowledge, these abilities. But if we speak about it, we're ridiculed. And he explained to me like this, which is a good analogy. He said, Kevin, if me and you were in a room with uh, 100 people, we would be delusional and have mental health problems. If we get to a position where there's 51 people in the room of 100, like me and you, we become the majority, and then people listen to us. Well, I've now been in rooms with 100 people that are like me. And, and that's an amazing uh, feeling to know that the 100 people are normal, like I am, that have interactions, that know we are multidimensional, that know that the ETs are here and have been engaging us, and, and that we're, we're treated very badly on this planet by our ruling classes, and unfortunately we need to change that. It's unfortunate yeah, we need to change it, That's amazing. So I feel very hopeful after this. I hope listeners out there... <laughs> are tuning into this that you know it's not all doom and gloom. We've got we've got the these. Uh, this is the Council of Eight. Now tell me the eight species. Just to reiterate, these eight. You have one representative. No, you have two of the one species. What are the eight okay. species that are part of this council that you're meeting? Okay, part of the names. The Orton. They're the two in my bathroom when I was eight. They are an uh, Arcturians. They look like in the You're breaking up really bad, and I'm not sure what we can do about it. Let's try to say that again. Say that uh, Arcturian. 
Arcturian, uh-huh. Arcturian, or oh, the, the other two I've been communicating with who materialized in my bathroom when I was eight. She's a blue avian. I'm not quite sure which one, but she's a, 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 a empath. Uh, Zark is from the Pleiades area. I don't know where that is, really. uh, but he's a small grey, a great sense of humour. Uh, I'll take it, bring my wife's things around the house. And uh, a friend of having a good And uh, the mathematician designed here, he designs proportion systems. And then there's Ma, he's Anunnaki, very old indeed, a uh, very strong um, energy. I was at the uh, Miami conference last year, and that channel is on my website, and he describes how they will uh, land at the United Nations, and that's quite interesting. It takes a lot of energy for me to do that. And then the next one will be Tag, he's a tall grey. He's responsible for the security, and not only for the Council of Eight, but for this uh, quadrant of the galaxy. Chica, he's the uh, Manta, Mantis. Um, I forget what he does now. but uh, And then there's Ola. She's a tall white, and she's a astrobiologist, I believe. Um, but Chica doesn't have a sense of humor, because when I met him on one occasion, I said to him, uh, are you an entomologist? And he gave me one of those looks that your mother gives you, when you say something as a child that you're not supposed to say, but uh, a very intelligent being. Uh, so that's the group of eight. They call themselves the Council of Eight, and they want to meet with our United Nations here in uh, in uh, the U.S. And I say he will dis- uh, describe that in the uh, channel, which is on my website. If anybody wants to go and have a look at it. Yeah, I've got the link to the website on AquarianRadio.com. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm going to take the time and listen to that myself. So um, cause this is very important information that you're conveying to us, and it is positive information that gets us out of this, you know, oh, we're all going to be eaten or slaves. And So what they're, they're saying is they recognize they're in a slave state, so they're here to assist us. What, what did they say they're going to help us do? Or are they, can they help us? Or are they just moral support? Is there something they can do to assist us? They're going to appear. Well, they're, they're already doing that. They're Only educating the people. Yeah. They're educating people like yourself, like Teresa, like me, and there are many others. And there's quite a, uh, um, a web of people now who are all interacting. And, and part of my mission is to bring all these different groups together under one umbrella. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that, but I've already made contact with the Disclosure Project. I've made contact with... Uh, uh, Rebecca Hartassel Wright from uh, uh, the Exo Politics Group, uh, Ray and Andy's mm-hmm. from the uh, uh, Free Group, and the, I've been trying to get in touch with Rama from Peru, uh, but I, I may have a contact now uh, through Free in relation to that. And uh, if we can bring all these groups together, there's one further group which is on the spiritual side, which is Deepak Chopra. I don't know him, I know of him, uh, I know a, a good friend of his now. Uh, Alan Steinfeld, who introduced me to the conference, and I did a channel where Arnold, Arnold, I'm sorry, Alan uh, introduced me. And he was sat next to me. I know Alan when, uh, very well. I mean, yeah. Oh, you know, okay, well. Alan did, uh, he, he, the he introduced me at the, yeah, Alan introduced me last year at the Contact and Consciousness Conference. Oh, that's it there just as a uh, an attendee. And while I was there, Art said he wanted to address the group. So I approached the uh, person who was organizing the group, and she put me in touch with Alan, and I asked Alan, and he kindly, uh, after his talk, introduced me and did a meditation. And uh, Art came through and spoke to the group. And uh, Alan said to me at the time, Kevin, I could feel the energy of Art. Uh, He was sat about four or five seats away from me. But he said the energy was tremendous. So I am being put into contact with these different people, even the new form people who were uh, primarily were collecting um, uh, data about UFOs, uh, I've now made contact with some of their uh, board members, and same with the free. So I am slowly bringing these people together. They are hearing my story, uh, and that's all it is. That's all they've asked me to do is share that story, and that's what I'm doing. And if that story is powerful enough to bring everybody together under that one umbrella, then that would be amazing. But again, I must stress. I must stress. I'm a very. I said I must stress that. Uh, 
You must stress what? Say that again. I must stress that I'm just a small part of this, a small piece. I'm unimportant from that perspective. All these other people have uh-huh. been working towards this for many, many years. So uh, we, I have to respect that. And uh, <clears throat> I don't want things taken out of context in relation to I'm just a small piece of a jigsaw in a large piece of jigsaw. Right. So that's important. Right. I, I get that too. We're all equally important. Exactly. Yeah, we can expand that. We're, we're all equal. We're all pieces of the, and the, the, we're, we're all, all parts of the ocean. Of the the same ocean. <laughs> yeah, we're all same ocean. All parts of a puzzle, the same puzzle. So okay, exactly. So um, we have uh, just a couple more minutes here, so we want to wrap this up. Um, but what what TJ was show, getting though. at it was like doing a doing a conference somewhere. Um, where are you going next, and what conference are you going to be at? I've it's been on Florida. hiatus. I, I know. I was going to be at Contact in the Desert this weekend. I'm not there. It started. It starts tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. So I it's whenever we can present one. our Allied Command organization well, together with the UFO to be, Association. Yeah, that has to be organized into a a, um, a narrative. Well, we'll start like tomorrow seminar. night. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll start with gonna, Kevin tomorrow night. With narrative with Kevin. With Ken so Canada. I'll, I'll the, the guys, the guys coming with the okay. biggest UFO okay. group in Canada ever. Who's that? Okay. He's got. His oh. name is Brian Sure. Brian Sure. Brian. Brian. How do you spell H U? It's on my. Uh, can you look it up? It's on the. Uh, oh my God. Sure, I think it's S H U R. Okay, uh, Brian. Oh, okay, well. So tomorrow, Brian Shore, T- Ted R. Yeah. Johnson, Janet Care Leslie, Teresa J. Morris, and Kevin Briggs. We're going to be on this group show tomorrow, and we're going to connect the dots and start taking us to critical mass to disclosure. It doesn't have to be in 2020. We can. Start it's it exposure now. to <laughs> disclosure. I call exposure it exposure to, to disclosure for allied okay, command. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to do an exposure, exposure to, to disclosure. disclosure. And these are conscious contacts. We're organizing teams. in 2019 so we can have the big right. group 2020. We're going to explode in yep. 2020, but we're getting but, the allied command to bring everybody together. It doesn't matter if you're Andromedan or in Terran or... Uh, avion or i don't care whoever you are what color you are what but you can be an ambassador for your alienologist group of people because we're terrans we're in physical form we're called terrans t-e-r-r-a-n-s for the earth right. we call earth terra most groups in the uh right different groups the so black as terrans we, we may all have we're probably seedlings star seeds of all these groups in our dna or 23 chromosomes is what I think. I think we're all yeah. mixed and mixed. So all, all the, the children are coming the together. Of the, we're the end result of a yeah. grand experiment in the cosmos that's been going on for billions if not trillions of years. So we're, we we're get all to wake linked. up we're now, and then the next thing is they take us to different planets, and the new group comes down. But I've been, re, I've been reanimated several times on this planet. And so, you know, I was here during the 47 to 97. But remember, Janet, I didn't come out. So, you know, I, I think that everybody with the, in my group has been waiting on me to show up too. So my group must be universally pretty high up there and important. They think they are anyway. Tom said they put their pants on the same way we did. But see, he <laughs> hasn't heard my story either. So we'll have to put all the okay, groups we're, together. Okay. See? Let's wrap up. We have, we're down to 90 seconds. So. Okay. Um, so tomorrow we're going to gather tomorrow. again. We'll send out the link. We'll put it out on the internet before we go to bed tonight. I'll send it to Kevin. Kevin, um, say your website again. What's your main website for people? It's www dot kevin james briggs dot com. It's all spelled out. J A M E S. And T J, what's your main website? www dot KevinJamesBriggs.com. It's just my name. Okay, and I have the link for that on the website. And TJ, what's your main 
website that you want people to look at to skip one? UFO Association dot org. UFO Association dot org. Okay, and, and please everybody go look at AquarianRadio.com. That's where I have the link for all these shows, and I keep cataloging it. It drives me crazy, but I've been doing this for going on eight years, so it's pretty accurate, pretty up to date. And uh, we want you to, you know, keep on checking, <laughs> checking back <laughs> with us because we are disclosure. All right, well, this is the end of the show. Thank you so much. Much love and blessings and aloha. Everybody say aloha. Thank aloha. you. Aloha. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Nice bye-bye. to meet you. Okay, bye-bye. Talk to you tomorrow. Aloha. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.